Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. We begin with a crime driven by pure greed. Tonight, the mother and son who murdered Pop so they could cash in on the house he loved. But they didn't know that their victim had changed his will. For the first time, the chilling police interviews, including the moment the pair discovered it was all for nothing. Look, they were remarkably calm. What was was home with the kids. It was clear that she had organised everything. How am I supposed to have done it to Rob? He's not exactly a little man. Oh, I was totally shocked because how could it happen to him, you know? So, set the record straight. Let Rob rest in peace to not only kill a family member for money, but also to involve your children. I, I wouldn't think you could get a, a lower act. Samantha Brownlow, age 43, disability pensioner and convicted murderer. Her accomplice, her unemployed son, Corey Lovell, age 19. Their victim, 62-year-old Robin Berendorf, a man who'd raised Samantha as his daughter. Their names you've probably never heard of, but this is a crime you'll never forget. And tonight, for the first time, you'll hear the astonishing police interviews where a mother tries to stitch up her own son for a murder she had planned. He's like another person, he just goes ballistic when he goes off. It's unbelievable that a mother could do that, all for money. Right here in this street is where this horrendous crime played out. The victim, an innocent pensioner, who never suspected two members of his own family would arrive in the dead of night to kill him. Well, he's a uh, fun-loving, happy guy, like to talk, do anything to help anybody. Shirley Mansky says her brother, Robin Berendorf, didn't have a bad bone in his body. He was lucky to survive a car crash 30 years ago that left him with minor brain injuries. So he was basically an invalid pensioner for about 30 years. Robin Berendorf then met and married Julina, who had a seven-year-old daughter, Samantha. He gave them a home and raised Samantha as his own child. He basically was her father, yes, and her children were his grandchildren. As far as he was concerned, that were his life. But Samantha would eventually betray that trust, turning the family home into a grisly murder scene. When she was first questioned by police, she admitted Robin was the only dad she knew. We got along well. Yeah. I was the closest he regarded as his own child. He was just like father and daughter, I think. Okay. At this point, she denied any involvement in his death, even taking out a funeral notice mourning his loss. Rob, you are a great stepdad and will be missed. Rest in peace with mum now. All our love, Samantha, Corey, kiss, kiss, kiss. It's, it's deplorable when you think about um, this man had um, given her a home had, uh, I guess, loved her as a, as a child since um, she was a very young age and, and had a, a sense of trust towards her. And she's used that against him more for the sense of greed. Detective Sergeant Andrew Self is the man who uncovered the deeply depraved motivations of Samantha Brownlow's crime. She was very focused on money. All she ever cared about in life was money. Are you aware of the existence of any will? Yes, I know. He, you know, he made me go with him when he made his will. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I know how it stands. Samantha Brownlow thought she was the sole beneficiary of Robin Berendorf's estate. So she hatched a plan to kill him in the hope of collecting $200,000 from the sale of his house. But she couldn't do it alone, so convinced son Corey to help out for a sum of 50 grand. 
For these people who had um, basically lived on welfare their entire life, uh, 200 grand or 50,000 was a tremendous amount of money for them to uh, obtain in one hit. Their sadistic mission begins on Good Friday and was all captured on CCTV. At 7.32 p.m., a barefoot Corey Lovell walks into a service station wearing jeans and a brown T-shirt. Their victim's home is a five-hour drive away. But before getting there, they stop again. Samantha Brownlow walks in alone, buys two bottles of Coke and then grabs two Mars bars as well. The shop attendant has no idea this customer is ready to kill. She calmly walks back to the car where Corey is waiting. Their next stop is a school car park just 120 metres from Robin Berendorf's home. At around 2am, this mother and son silently approach the house. They check for open windows before breaking in through the back door. Their plan had been to smother him in his sleep, but Robin Berendorf was awake, throwing their plans into disarray. This is where this violent struggle's played out. Uh, it is, and um, uh, here's your entry point. Police crime scene photos show the laundry area where Robin Berendorf was attacked, leaving the toilet. Corey Lovell smashes a wooden stool over his head, knocking him to the ground. A violent struggle ensues, smashing a glass door at the rear, but Corey Lovell overpowers him, beating him so severely with a leg of the stool, his face was beyond recognition. While Robin Berendorf was fighting for his life right here in this laundry, the woman whom he'd raised as his own daughter was cowering inside this shower. She waited in there until she could only hear one person breathing, and then she came out and inflicted further injuries on his lifeless body. Not only that, she then gets a knife from the kitchen for Corey Lovell to inflict a further four stab wounds to Robin Berendorf's neck. The fight had been so loud it woke the neighbours. One of them looked outside and saw a woman walking through their yard who had a distinctive waddle that they'd seen before. Samantha had a fairly unique uh, shape, particularly the silhouette at night. It was fairly moonlit night. Uh, they picked the silhouette straight away and, uh, and recognised who it was and were curious as to why uh, she would be there at that time when they knew that she had left uh, that address. The whole side of, uh, Detective Sergeant Andrew Self um, breaks this yeah. news to Samantha Brownlow in their first recorded interview. A witness has seen the offender leaving the house. Wasn't you? Wasn't you? The uh, witness has described that person in detail, having seen that person numerous times before. How am I supposed to have done it to Robbie? He's not exactly a level man. Witness have described that person as you. Tell that. What was it mean? I was home with the kids. She was very, very calm and uh, collected. Uh, she had um, no inkling that um, police knew anything about her involvement. You have entered into the dwelling of Robin Barrendorf. I haven't got a key. An altercation's taken place. How am I supposed to overpower a man, grown man? Samantha Brownlow's story was that her gold pulsar couldn't make the five hour drive. It was a car her victim had bought for her and was captured pulling in for petrol at 2.17am, just minutes after they'd killed him. She fills up, pays cash for the petrol, then tops up the radiator too. Three hours later, they stop again. Brownlow grabs two more Cokes, then orders some breakfast. Every service station that she went to, she had purchased Coke and, and Mars bars, and it was probably her undoing in the end was um, uh, that need for the sugar rush, I guess. 
At this stop, Corey Lovell gets impatient and comes inside too. Only now, the bottom of his jeans have been cut off, turning them into shorts. They both leave calmly, confident they've got away with murder. Corey Lovell would later tell a family member that his mum laughed the whole way home, saying, I'm going to be rich. A day after the body was found, police came here to the home of Samantha Brownlow. She was outside talking to a male, but walking towards her wheelie bin. An officer saw her dump a plastic bag inside, and he made sure that it was seized for evidence. These are the police photos of what was found in that bin. A brown T-shirt and cut-off jeans, identical to what Corey Lovell was wearing at the petrol station. And he also had written his girlfriend's name, uh, Emma, uh, at some point in time on the, on the leg of those pants, so we knew they were definitely uh, Corey Lovell's pants. Blood spots on the shirt were analysed and found to contain Robin Berendorf's DNA. Police also seized Samantha Brownlow's clothes from a laundry basket in the Housing Commission home they'd just moved into. They also found the gold sandals she was wearing on the CCTV. They matched a partial shoe print found at the murder scene. One month later, police had gathered enough evidence to move in and arrest her. Eventually we were able to force our way into the house and uh, Samantha Brownlow was located hiding uh, in the ensuite. She was brought in for her second police interview and soon realised the weight of evidence against her. Are you changing that story now? Yes, I think I probably should get it by now. After speaking with a lawyer, she returns for her third police interview and now decides to confess. I just want to tell the truth about how Rob died. Okay. But not the complete um, truth. She tells a version trying to minimise her involvement, blaming it all on her son. And Corey had said something in passing about, about how he was curious as to whether he could ever kill anybody. He said he would like to know what the feeling is. She even claims she wanted to pull out when they got to the house. And I said, Corey, I'll just forget it, let's go. And I started to walk away and then he tugged on the glass door and it just popped open. Corey would tell a family member that his mum congratulated him after the murder, saying, good boy, that's my son. But Brownlow tells police she tried to stop it. And I bolted, I took off and I hid in the shower room and the next thing I heard was this big whack. Corey told me he picked up a stool that was in there and hit Rob over the head with it. He was hurting Rob. The way he was doing it, he was just cruel. What were you yelling out? For it to stop. The sound of the crack across the head made me feel like throwing up. Corey's your son. Why didn't you stop him? You haven't seen Corey go off. He's had me pinned up by the thread against the wall. He, he just... He's like another person. He just goes ballistic when he goes off. But those crocodile tears won't get her very far. Brownlow agrees she brought Corey a knife from the kitchen to finish the job. She eventually admits the ruthless plan was all her idea and pleads guilty to murder. Corey Lovell pleads not guilty, but a jury takes less than an hour to convict him too. I guess they were uh, two peas in a pod. Um, neither of them cared. Uh, at all about uh, Mr Berendorf and all they could both care about is the money and, and that's all they thought about, it was just that pure greed. But the payday they were working towards wasn't even there. This is the moment Detective Sergeant Andrew Self breaks the news that Robin Berendorf changed his will. I give the whole of my estate to my brother Roy Berendorf. Well, he's changed it. Not yourself. No, I didn't know he changed that. 
get any comment to make about that. No, it surprises me. He said he hadn't. She appeared quite shocked, and she obviously realised at that point that uh, what she had done was all for nothing. Brownlow is desperate that her savage crime hasn't been in vain. Did you check his little, little bag that he carries around? That's where he normally kept his will. That's where this is going from. Okay. But her craving for Robin's house and money doesn't stop. Before being charged with his murder, she makes plans to contest the new will, along with her sister. Who was going to contest the will? On both of us. On the day of sentencing, the wheels had well and truly fallen off this mother and son murder mission. Corey Lovell sat in the dock with tears streaming down his face. Mum Samantha put her arm around to console him but he pushed her away so violently, officers had to jump in to separate them. At the Bundaberg Supreme Court, they were both sentenced to life. Those close to the case find it hard to believe a mother could convince her son to murder and then try to blame it on him. A narcissist would probably be the, the term that springs to mind. Um, obviously, it's uh, her self-interest uh, to her outweighed any uh, maternal instinct that she had regarding her, her own children. And it seems she may never change her ways. Writing letters to Robin Berendorf's family from prison, still chasing money. She wrote a letter to my brother asking for money and that she'd missed Rob. That she missed Rob. Mm. She killed Rob. Yeah, she missed him. Like she's going to be a danger to society if she gets out. She's going to prey on somebody else because that's what she's always done. Corey Lovell appealed his murder conviction, but it was dismissed. Lovell and Samantha Brownlow will be eligible for parole after serving 15 years.